More than 140 men and women sit on North Carolina's death row today. This is the story of one of those men. On May 24, 1991, Nathan Bowie and his uncle, William Bowie, shot two unarmed men to death on a street corner in Hickory, North Carolina. Soon after, they turned themselves into the police. Nathan was 20 years old. Since he couldn't afford an attorney, he was given a court-appointed one named Tom Portwood. At the trial, prosecutors described an execution-style killing. Nathan, they told the jury, shot two men to death with less feeling than I would have if I stomped an ant by mistake. The jury quickly sentenced Nathan and his uncle to death for the killings of Nelson Shuford and Calvin Wilson. Only after Nathan was sentenced to death for his crimes did he realize just how incompetent his lawyer had been. Portwood would arrive at the jail to visit Nathan smelling of alcohol. Because I'm an alcoholic, I can look at somebody else and sort of see if they're having a problem with something. And to me, he had a problem with drinking. But who am I to say that, that he's an alcoholic? Nobody is going to believe me. Nobody is going to trust my word. No, it's no way uh, the, the, the court is going to allow an incompetent attorney to uh, represent me. Uh, so I got to trust this guy. And to find out that he was a drunk, I mean, you know, I just don't understand it. I don't understand it. Only years later, when he was dying of an alcohol-related illness, did Portwood admit to drinking 12 shots a day and coming to court drunk, even in capital cases. During the time he represented Nathan, police stopped Portwood's car and measured his blood alcohol content at five times the legal limit, enough to kill most people. Today, evidence about the client's background and life story are key to capital defense. This evidence helps put the crime in context, and while it doesn't excuse killing, or eliminate the need for severe punishment, it usually persuades a jury to vote for life instead of death. But Nathan missed that chance because his attorneys went to court unprepared and lacking significant evidence. This allowed prosecutors to paint Nathan as a seasoned killer. I mean, they could just say that type of stuff that I'm in some uh, 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 gang or, or all this, this violence and stuff that they portrayed me. That's not me, and that's, that's so far from the dang on truth. That it's just unbelievable. On the day before the murder, Shuford and Wilson argued with Nathan's aunt and fired a shot at her. Nathan believed his family was in danger, so he agreed to help his uncle track the men down. He says he never intended to kill them, but when he and William found themselves going up against a group of men he assumed were armed, he panicked, fired several shots, and fled. Nathan knows he committed a terrible crime and deserves to be punished. All he wanted was a fair trial and a chance to tell his whole story. I made a mistake. It was no no evil intent. I was scared. Uh, but he just they just twist the story all up. They don't know who I am. The, the jury didn't know who I am. It's just whatever the the, the, the DA had said and, and what my lawyer didn't say. His childhood was marred by abuse, neglect, and his family members' substance abuse. They lived in poverty without the resources for effective treatment. When he was just 11 years old, Nathan began to self-medicate with alcohol. Yeah, his mother had substance abuse issues, um, both with alcohol and with drugs. And it wasn't a safe environment for him, so DSS would intervene. He would end up in a foster home. Nathan spent six years at an orphanage. At the orphanage, the young men were sexually abused and Nathan slept with a large stick to try to protect himself. But because the defense lawyers didn't do their job, they never accessed the wealth of information about his life that showed his troubles. If any jury had seen him for the human being he is, the lovable human being, the loved human being, that no jury would have sentenced him to death. After Nathan's conviction, North Carolina introduced several reforms that would have prevented what happened to Nathan. In 2001, the state legislature created the Office of Indigent Defense Services. This office now closely monitors the performance of capital defense attorneys. Today, 
Tom Portwood would not be appointed to defend a person facing the death penalty. In 2004, North Carolina added open file discovery to felony cases, allowing defendants to see all the information in the prosecutor's file. In Nathan's case, the prosecution withheld a letter from Sipes Orchard Home, an orphanage where Nathan lived for over five years. And it, this is a letter where the prosecutor was told that Nathan was one of the favorites of several staff members and uh, talked about his potential and offered to talk to the prosecutor and put their phone number uh, right in this letter. This is precisely the type of evidence that helps a jury see a defendant's humanity and potential for redemption. But the prosecution lied to the jury about the willingness of people from Sipes to testify for Nathan. The prosecutor said the defense couldn't find a single witness from Sipes Orchard Home. He told the jury, quoting, why didn't they get somebody in here from there? Think about it. So the prosecutor made this argument after having received this letter about Nathan being the favorite of several staff members in inviting him to call them to talk about Nathan. It made me feel hopeless that um, I had to sit there and listen to him make my son look like a cold-blooded murder. If a jury knew that this was a lie, um, they wouldn't have imposed the death penalty. The situation I'm in, which I'm very sorry for, doesn't mean he just throw, you know, just throw me away, you know what I'm saying? I made a mistake, I was scared, uh, and I just want to help my family. Dear Mom, I got a chance to finally hug you after all these years. This is all I have been thinking about. Well, it's just barbaric that Nathan was given two death sentences by a jury who didn't know who he was. Because if they knew who he was, uh, that his mother loved him, that the folks from Sipes loved him, that they never would have sentenced him to death. More than three quarters of the people who now sit on death row in North Carolina were tried before these key reforms, which were designed to ensure fair trials. Under modern laws, many of them would likely not have been sentenced to death. It's time to revisit these cases and ensure that each person receives equal treatment under the law. Um.